21 tips I'm going to take you through. Every single one of them fits into some sort of relevance or credibility frame, right? The key is that it's a lot of details, there's a lot to do, and when I first learned, I'm not going to say I learned marketing, I learned marketing by reading, but I learned sales from a sales trainer, right? I worked with somebody who, who actually mentored me and taught me, and he had said something to me that stuck with me to today, which is in selling, there is absolutely no such thing as neutral. Everything you do, every single detail, either increases your probability of selling or decreases your probability of selling. Right? That's the key. If you remember that, there's no detail that's actually too small. There are only details that might not have as much value as others. So, first one is value. Right? I said the word. What does it actually mean? Well, I would assume that most of you, being that this is an SEO meetup, right, are fairly comfortable with the idea that most of the people who come to your website aren't coming in through the home page. Yeah? Yeah, that, that, that makes some sense? Okay. And so when they come in and wherever they come in, they need to immediately know what it is that you do. They need to get some sense of your value proposition. That's a unique value proposition or some sense of your unique campaign proposition. Okay? The word unique, don't get hung up on it. It's unlikely that it will be unique. We're not talking the roster reads unique. It's no longer applicable. However, I want to know what you're saying. So the first one is by the cost, right? Over 10 million shipped. They communicated. LLB, guaranteed you have a word. MailChimp, powerful email marketing, go to meetings, online meetings made easy. They sort of give you an idea that if you've landed on this page, you have some clue about what they do. Really, people go from page to page and they don't know. If you think your visitors do, you're giving them way more credit. I invite you to really look at a bell curve, okay, and chart and, and look at an IQ variant. Right? And just look at it one, one standard deviation away, right? The mean IQ is actually 86. And you're in pretty bad territory. And I don't mean this to be condescending, but people are not smart. You cannot count, but they're also not stupid. You cannot count on them to be smart. They will, if you, if you count on them to be stupid, they'll be smart when you don't want them to be. If you count on them to be smart, you will be disappointed. Okay? The other thing that they do is that their offers are persuasive and relevant. This is sort of important, right? Free shipping. What's fascinating, I love to put up Overstock, they were a longtime client, um, and what's fascinating about them is that this is the most productive thing that they do is free shipping. Does anybody know what Overstock charges for shipping? Two ninety five. Yeah, yeah. It's a flat rate, two ninety five. Really, no kidding. Their most successful promotion by far is free shipping. Their second most successful promotion is one dollar shipping. Okay, so people are really sensitive to shipping costs. Okay, but they say things that are persuasive and relevant. So free shipping can have some value. Now. It's great as an offer, but what happens if you come to the page and it's really not your first visit, right? Which is exactly how we experienced it. We came to the page. We're long-time overstock shoppers and we saw this offer but how much real estate is eating up. And it continues to do that, right? Except in the place where you most need it, right? Which is, once we get past the shopping cart and into the checkout page, right? We've seen this over and over and over again. We're reminding people of this offer. They get to the place where you're asking them for their credit card, right? The place of the, the term for this in psychology, right? And, and I'm here with my significant other, we have got like a master's in psychology. So I hate to say these things. But the word that they use is cognitive dissonance. It is the period of greatest cognitive dissonance, right? I'm about to take out my wallet, and I'm thinking to myself, 
am I really going to get free shipping? Is this what you really want? Is this what, is this when you want to think about it? So you, they make the offer, and they continue to make the offer and keep it in the flow. So, as I said, we keep it site wide. This is actually a really neat trick because this is done with a personalization engine called Lunatake. And they did this with a client where if you got there, I think it was past 9.30, they made this special late night offer, right? 10% off. Okay? The thing is, is they continue this offer, with this personalization tool throughout, right? And they make sure that it stays there. Right, all the way through. This concept is called scent. What does scent mean? Scent was actually discovered, or the principle of scent was discovered at Park, at the Xerox Research Center in, in Palo Alto, right? It really was Palo Alto Research Center for Xerox. And when they were studying um, hyperlinks, what they noticed is the following behavior. The people very much behave like bloodhounds, right? That once they pick up on a certain scent, right? If they were oriented towards a certain task or they were oriented against something, they pick up on it and they keep going there. In fact, Jared Spool, um, and, and if you don't know who he is, UIE.com, check it out. Um, really who's a brilliant guy, came up with a rule that I love to quote. It's called the move forward until found rule. And just think about this. What it says is that people will go to a page, and if this page contains the information they want, they'll be happy. Or if it contains a link to the information they want, they'll be happy. And if not, they'll basically abandon the page. Does that make sense? Right? Is there a, right? That's why they do things. So when you look at the bounce rates, when you look at exit pages on your site, that's probably what's happening. People are losing sense, they're losing interest. Right? So scent is one of the main things that we want to talk about, and it's the concept that we talk about in our books of persuasive momentum. Remember, it's not your persuasive momentum. It's the customer's persuasive momentum. It's their motivation, right? What's relevant to them, what's credible to them that keeps them going. There's no funnel, right? This is a problem I have with that whole funnel metaphor. Right? How, how many of you look at like your analytics sales funnel? Is that it? Or, or, or is it just everybody ashamed to raise their hand? Um, I'd be more ashamed to not raise my hand on that one. It's a great, it's a great tool. However, it gives this impression, right? When we use a metaphor, it's very powerful because metaphors become uh, assume the meaning of what we're talking about, right? There's a funnel works by gravity, right? We pour water in or pour some sort of liquid or some sort of grains in there, right? And they come down. Tell me something. When somebody comes to your website, is there anything, any force that draws them to your checkout page? None, right? So there's not an actual funnel, other than the sense that we can look at it that way in a report. What the only thing that brings them there is their own motivation. So Maintaining sense is important. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. So Responses, which is a good email company, right? They're, they're a email service provider, has this banner. And when you follow it to the next page, well, they maintain good sense. Not only do they have the same name, the same picture, they reminded people of what it was that was interesting to them. Because remember, we're looking at it on one slide. When you hit it on a banner and you go to the next page, if it says something different, how many people do you think actually remember what was what they clicked on? Not many. And so it's a sort of scary thing. Um, let's go to the next one. Web analytic consulting. Now I'm going to show you a successful example of this, but I've got to tell you that Brian is brutal. You know that he's the founder of the Web Analytics Association. Okay, and we did this. Wow, for about four or five years, we used them as a public example to humiliate and embarrass them. Okay? And the thing is, for us, it, what was truly embarrassing is, is that if you think about web analytics, this is what it's measuring, right? Isn't it measuring set? It's measuring click-through paths, measuring what people are doing, right? We should have some idea about why they're doing it.